Well, it's time to get back to something a little bit more normal. So what could be more normal than talking about some giant bugs that are taking over the world? Welcome to Star Joes. I'm your host Ryan and today I'm going to be covering Centipede number one and number two from Dynamite Comics. Before I get into the comics, I wanted to thank everyone out there for their support. I know my last video talked about the uh, writer Aubrey Sitterson and his comments from 9-11 and the support that I received from that is completely amazing. I uh, could not imagine the amount of support that I received from all you viewers out there and how many of you guys are out there supporting me. I will have a follow-up video uh, that will come in probably the next week or so, just talking about some things that have happened since then and hopefully having some type of update from IDW. But to talk about uh, the comic of Centipede, uh, Centipede was a video game that came out in 1980 in the large consoles in the arcades, and then it came to the Atari 2600 in 1982, and that's where I first experienced it and first started playing it. Uh, way back then. Uh, it was a very simplified game. You basically were this little gnome looking type triangular laser shooting thing uh, that had to deal with a giant centipede coming down towards you and uh, zigzagging in between mushrooms along the way. It also You also had to deal with spiders and scorpions and all different kinds of insects. Well there really wasn't much of a story to it so a Atari just recently signed agreements with Dynamite Comics to actually create some comics based on those old video games and kind of flesh them out. Sword Quest was the first one that came out, and that wasn't quite what I was expecting. However, I do think it's a very good comic. I think it's being done very well. Centipede was more in line with what I was looking for uh, as far as what I expected when I actually saw the title of it. Now, I read issue one, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, the writer on this was Max Bemis, and the artist was Ian Marin, and it dealt with a character named Dale Trell, and he was on another planet called Styrek, and this planet has been wiped out from the centipede. And as I was reading that story, it was very interesting because Dale is talking to you as the reader, and you are the imaginary character that he, the imaginary friend essentially, that he has created to uh, keep him from going insane. And I thought it was really well done in that first issue. Uh, you got a little bit of sense that he was slowly going mad a little bit and having to deal with this huge centipede that took over his planet and wiped out everyone he knew and loved. Um, I actually would have, my only one complaint with that first issue is I would have actually liked to have seen that madness played up just a little bit more, almost like a telltale heart type level, where it's like, you know, they think I'm crazy, but you, you think I'm sane, right? And... We didn't really get that. It was done a little bit more of a comedic level, but also dealing with some a serious threat that was going on. So I really read that. I read that first issue, and I actually did a video talking about what I thought of that first issue. I thought there was a lot of potential. I thought it was a good comic. I didn't think it was a great comic, but I thought it was a good one with a lot of potential. Um, I thought the art was solid. It had a very comic strip style art to it that's kind of being known today in the comic industry. Uh, almost reminded me of something like from for better or for worse or something along those lines. But it still kind of worked. I really enjoyed it. it. had a cool cliffhanger at the end of it. You have this guy that's just trying to survive and he knows he, the only way he can is if he actually goes out back out into the world. Then I read issue number two and all of that hope and uh, potential that I saw in issue one <clears throat> went out the window a bit. Uh, issue 2 suffers from what a lot of comic book fans know as Spider-Man 3 Syndrome, uh, referring to the Spider-Man 3 movie. And it's really dealing with trying to cram too much into one issue. What you deal with in the first issue is you have this guy Dale, and it's very simplified. He goes out into the world. He creates an imaginary friend, which is you, the reader. When you get into the second issue, you start changing that concept that you've created, which is... Dale becomes this bumbling buffoon of sorts who just barely survives various acts that no person should be able to survive. Uh, you know, he's getting crashed into walls and he's being carried away by the centipede. And then we also take this great monster creature, this centipede creature who 
has ravished the entire planet and we make that into an imbecile as well so you have a character who's barely surviving who's going a little bit crazy and it's often said that the best heroes have the best villains well you just made the villain in this a complete moron uh, it's stated that the centipede is stupid uh, the only reason that it's wiped out the entire planet is because it's so resilient it's so indestructible um, and then you have the character Dale actually stab it in the eye which hurts it and makes it curl up and go away for a little bit you would think if the character if the creature was that dumb and the people on the planet were at least semi-intelligent that they would have figured out already that maybe we stab it in the eye or shoot it in the eye or do something like that so you've weakened the character there you've weakened your hero because of it and then with all of that going on you throw a relationship into it as a flashback uh, Dale had a best friend that he grew up with and saw that you know the potential in Dale as far as like look you're a good guy we, we you know we should hang out and they hang out together and Dale develops feelings for him and then that's realized later that they have feelings for each other you cram all of that into one issue and then you assume that this friend of his who he has feelings for is eliminated you haven't earned and you haven't built up that relationship if you had done it over several issues over several flashbacks then there's actually some feeling and you, you feel sorry for Dale as a character that he he's lost this love that he had but it was just it was again crammed into one issue I want to like this comic I, I really enjoy the concept behind it uh, there is a cliffhanger at the end of this second issue but it's starting to become like a comedy of errors that this guy is even surviving at this point uh, you don't root for him you don't cheer for him uh, you don't feel he's up against anything that's gonna hurt him in the end because he has already proven that the thing is a, is completely stupid as a creature so at the end I have to give centipede issues one and issue two uh, somewhat low ranking I'm gonna say that centipede issue one and issue two will put Duke back into a coma so if you've read issues uh, one and two of centipede let me know what you think of it put it back down in the comments below I'd also like to know what other comics you'd like to see Dynamite do related to the Atari franchise. You know, there's a lot of games out there. I personally would love to see a uh, comic based on the adventure game from Atari. Um, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Like, what Atari game do you think could make a really cool comic? Uh, also, I wanted to make you guys aware that on September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th is Baltimore Comic Con. I will be there. So if you see me, and I will be wearing a Star Joe's t-shirt. Uh, if you see me, feel free to come up, talk with me. I'd love to meet you. Uh, maybe we'll do a quick video together, who knows. But uh, again, I want to thank all you guys for support. Uh, there will be a follow-up video to my earlier video. I'll also be coming out with some more comic reviews for you. I have an unboxing video coming up. So again, thank you very much. And remember, the Force will be with you because knowing us is half the battle. Take care, guys.